Hi, I'm Roland Bolin with Kosh the Nosh. In celebration of the reissue on Demon Records of Mark Bolin and T-Rex, Zinc Alloy and the Hidden Riders of Tomorrow. I remember meeting your dad um, in Derek Taylor's office at the Apple Records building in London. Um, <clears throat> I was there working for, with Ringo at the time. He had just done Sentimental Journey and I was working on his country album, Buku Blues. Um, and it's one of those Derek Taylor moments where he just gathers people together, you know, and there's, I'm working with Ringo, Ringo says, this is Mark. And, oh my God, how nice to meet you. Um, and we just got on fire. We're both from the East End, sort of East End of London. Yeah. You know, we both had the same accents, you know. Uh, so we got off and we started talking in our own dialect, which confused every American <laughs> inside, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, and then he said, well, let's do an album cover together. And that's where we, I pulled in, uh, Peter Howe. Peter Howe was a war correspondent. You know, he comes back from Africa. wherever he's been, he's got a bullet hole in his helmet. You know, sort of like this. Mm -hmm. He sort of shot that in the studio. Mark arrives on time, looking splendid. Um, <clears throat> and he proceeded to sit on this tank. We had lots of props around. You know, we had Groucho glasses and you know, all sorts of stuff. We we're playing with stuff all the time. And then we got the tank out and he sat on it. Um, and what he's dressed on is just about how he turned up, though we did do some hair and makeup and stuff. Mm -hmm. A little bit of glitter, because this was like the glam uh, business at the time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that was for the album Tanks? For Tanks, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we did that, and that went down well. And the, the, the Zinc Alloy was like a labour of love, because the other, if you remember, the, the original had layers of die-cut holes in it when you opened and opened and opened. You came up with the last picture, this one, I think. Um, so that was a labour of love. So I was still in Britain at the time when I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I came over to the States at this point. And the next time I met Mark um, was on the penthouse of Roosevelt. Um, and I think that led to the last album cover I did, which is the one I cannot find at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but if I dig that up, probably later, see what I can find. But I like working with Mark. He's got a very, very fine sense of humour. A very, very fine Cockney sense of humour. Yes. You know, because I've lost, I've lost my accent because I've been here since 73, 74. Um, but he, yeah, so we would uh, just sort of chat about all the different things. He's very sort of opinionated, but it's totally different from this show. It's, it, there was a stage mark and it was a mark mark. Yeah. You know, where you could just sit down and I'm afraid to roll a doobie and do this and drink. You know, and, you know, just sort of, Giggle. I mean, yeah. he giggled a lot. Has anyone told you that? Yeah, yeah he, he was very happy and yes, right, very exactly. happy. And, and it's infectious. Of, mischievous. Yes, yes. yes it, yeah. Someone called him a, the, the imp, I think, at some stage. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, we really enjoyed ourselves working together. And, yeah. uh, lost track. And then, of course, the, the tragic day came and I was over here with the flu and couldn't get to the funeral. And to be honest, I didn't really want to because I was so upset. You know? Yeah, I believe it. Didn't do that, didn't do that. So um, that's sort of basically how um, it all came together. So how do you feel now that here we are in it's, 2024? It's, it's yeah. amazing, you know, it just strikes me as, wow, you know, stuff comes back, and, you know, now and again and bites you. And this one's a really good bite, I love it, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, what was today's... Fidelity and techniques, I'm sure they got rid of all the tapers and all this was, you know, I'm sure it's pretty damn good. Yeah. So I can't wait to put it on the turntable. But I remember the, I, we used to cater, I, one of the things we used to do for our clients is we used to cater for them, okay? So when they arrived, there were plenty of things that never had eaten. There's a fridge full of whatever, you know, good things and bad things, you know. And, um, he would just settle in, and he was a trooper. He would put up with waiting, getting the lighting right. And in those days, we used to light the bell cars, mm -hmm. and they're those like they're strobes that flash off, and they all chained up, so they will flash at once. So he's kind of <laughs> blown out of his seat half the time. Um, but he'd put up with all that stuff, and we'd have a good time. And then we'd finish the, the session. He would linger, you know, yeah. until kind of the food went out, or it was like dark. I could never. I can't remember how he arrived. Was he in a taxi? Was he in a car? Was he? I just don't remember. Mm -hmm. 
that you would arrive magically and disappear magically. You know, so. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it was a very lovely man. I really enjoyed him a lot. So that's, that's how we got together. And in the meantime, I'm working, you know, for Apple and doing the Fab Four stuff. And it was all kind of, it was this huge sort of rock and roll era where we never really understood where it was going, you know. We didn't know we were building icons or anything. We just yeah. thought we were paying the rent, you know. But being as artistically perfect as possible. Yeah. And that's, I think he bounced off that, you know, because we were not going to get that. We are not going to let him out of that studio until we got these shot. I yeah. Believe it. yeah, yeah, we got the shot, all right. You know, so um, you know, there's a wind machine going. There's a lot of stuff going on behind him, you know, or behind me. Um, and as I say, Peter Howell, uh, he's gone too. Um, we lost him, uh, but he we did a few jobs together. I think that was basically the most fun we ever had working together. Over to you, Robin. Well, <laughs> thank you for sharing the stories, and this is a pleasure, and it's a great. Uh, and celebration of my dad is his music to, you know, find it. This is definitely it's a unique time because a lot of people are discovering his music for the first time. Right. And then to understand and see there was a lot more to it than just the glam thing. There was a lot of substance and a lot of unique artistry to it with the whole preparation and all of it. You know, there was a lot of people involved. And, oh, yeah. You know, this is... A, but he was the one who was, he was the, you know, the one who was pulling the strings. But yeah. He did it, he did it in a very, he was very gentle. Um, I never seen Louis Temper, um, and I think that was probably one of the reasons that he was so well liked and loved. Um, this was yeah, he was dedicated. He was going to get it right, but he's not going to piss everyone off trying to do something. You know, he would yeah, gently urge people to do so. And crack that up a little bit. You know, that's kind of uh, so I think that's when I met Tony Visconti for the first time, and I'm not sure whether she, he'd married May Pang by then. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, just a little bit to let you know. And we've been trying to meet, re meet you for the last three or four years because I wanted to tell you that. You know? Yeah. Because a lot of the people you're talking to, I presume, are audio people. Yeah, pretty much at that point. Yeah. Audio and some friends. But this is, yeah, the first time. And I've always been very attracted to the design work and also just, you know, it brought so much character to it. So now it's just, yeah, I always kind of, you know, you know, you never really get to. A lot of people don't get as much credit as they deserve. Uh, yeah. You know, but it was definitely that's <coughs> out of that era. And also, one of my functions was the bridge between the label and the artist. Yeah. Because sometimes it's friction. Um, and you know, things like with tanks. You know, that was that, there was a lot of problems over that. Like it's too phallic. You can't put that out. Yeah. Well, um, really. <laughs> By today's standards, because it was nothing, but at the time it was pretty daring. You know, just... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there was enough more going on. I totally see. Uh, he would be upset at the record company, the art department. I go in and Sally Falls, and we had this sort of sort of system at work. You know, but um, if if the pressing, if it was running late, mm -hmm. the album, you blame it on me, the cover. Okay, but when I'm in the uh, in the record company, no, I blame it on Mark. <laughs> and we we worked this out to a fine tea, so no one ever knew quite who caused the problem. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Probably Tony this country, but still, don't worry. Have you spoken lately to Tony? Yes, we've been in touch. Um, you know, it's amazing that even after all these years, everyone is still together, and we, uh, you know, every chance I get, I try to reach out to people. I just spoke with Bill Legend as well. Oh, wow. So he's one of the last original, original members that's still alive. So, you know, at this point, time is going by where everyone's getting older. Oh, um, dropping like flies on my head. And yeah. in the um, yeah. documentary film, Angel Headed Hipster, that had an opportunity to kind of put together some older interviews and newer interviews. And that film came out in the UK and in Ireland on Dog Wolf, and that should be coming out oh. in America sometime soon. So Good. that's like the revival of basically a new generation of people discovering who my dad was. And, and for me, it's always, for me, this is every time it's a discovery as well. Yeah. You know, so. My son would say the same thing. He's a, he is an avid T-Rex fan. And he's about 54 now, I think. Um, so yes, I mean, it's, it's definitely, you see, that's the whole thing about music, isn't it? It's, 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 it keeps us together, it marches on. Yeah. You know, I've worked for the Royal Opera House, I've worked for Rock and Roll, and it's, it's all the same stuff. 
just make you happy, you know, enjoy yourself. Yeah. And that's why I think Mark will epitomise that. He's not he's not gonna do it if he doesn't have fun. slots was cut either horizontally or vertically and so then the part of the picture that was on this screen mm -hmm. would be on the next screen down so and then the next screen down from there so it's printed on both sides of the board and so you slowly dissolve from one picture through the grid to the next picture and you ended up with the center picture which was and you hand cut you went in the design you had to well cut. I had to give the printer something to make steel dies with the cut so I had to draw this out on, you know, we, we had a film called Code Lift, mm -hmm. and it was red, and you cut holes in it, or to frisk it to sort of airbrush things. So I used that to actually cut the holes and gave that to the printer, and saying, hopefully that'll make your dies, because all these whole slots will have to be printed at the same time, and fold and become a perfect human register. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was a nightmare. <laughs> but no, it wasn't a nightmare, it was a labour of love because when it came out, well, it worked. Because <laughs> you, know? you can't sort of screw up 500,000, you know what I mean? No, 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 no. <laughs> that's not good karma. <laughs> but that's where it was. I mean, it was a, the music, the evolution of music, but then also pushing the envelope for the fan to have. Yeah, that was the experience. whole point. It was really aimed at you know, people to, oh my God, this is such fun. Um, but it also was a fact, you've got to remember that in those days the budgets were not as bad as they are now. They were really good. Because if you're going to, you know, say you're going to spend like $10,000 on an album cover design, right? In two weeks, they're going to be making how much money? At six bucks a pop and there's two million, or 500,000 sold. Yeah. So our little two ten thousand dollars $10,000 doesn't mean anything to the record company. You know, I mean, I think Hotel California came in at $40,000, but within, you know, five days, they sold 20, you know, million of the yeah. damn things. <laughs> surprise, surprise, the boys are home. My golden angels run down my telephone. The heat's on, mister, can't you hear them 